So it wasn't too long ago that if an auto manufacturer was going to build a full-size sedan, they were going to target a buyer that was heading into retirement or was well into their retirement. As you can see, today that is simply no longer the case. What you're looking at is a 2014 Kia Cadenza. This is an all-new model for Kia and it is their flagship uh, sedan right now, at least until the larger and more powerful K900 goes on sale later this year. And the Cadenza competes head-on with class leaders like the Toyota Avalon, the Ford Taurus, the Chevrolet Impala, uh, the Chrysler 300, and it's very large. This vehicle slots above the midsize Optima. In terms of size, it's about a couple inches wider, a little bit taller. It's about five inches longer than the Optima. And you can see in terms of its styling, this thing is really sleek. In fact, looking at the back of the vehicle, it literally looks like an Audi A6. And that's not surprising considering Peter Schreier, who worked for Audi, is now working for Kia. And it's basically the reason why a lot of their designs have gotten very, very sleek. You can see LED taillights come standard. You have a dual integrated exhaust system. Now, my particular tester comes with the optional 19-inch multi-spoke wheels. They are probably going to be a pain in the butt to clean, but they make the vehicle look very good. Another element that makes the vehicle look good is this smoky blue color. It's a very fantastic looking color and it really just suits this vehicle. You can see at the front you've got traditional Kia styling elements here. These sleek swept back headlights, the tiger nose grille. It all makes for a very imposing and very sleek modern design, especially compared to Kia's last full-size offering, the Amante, which basically just looked like a fake Mercedes. This thing really has a more premium appearance to it and it's definitely a type of vehicle that will get a lot of stares. Now in the past if you wanted a full-size sedan, you really just wanted more room than a mid-size car but there was nothing really stylish to it today full-size sedans have really just been packed full of a lot of technological features and sleek styling and it, it offers all that at half the cost of like a mercedes-benz s-class a bmw 7 series uh, an audi a8 and it's particularly why the reason or why full-size sedans are coming back into the market. Now, my particular tester is an early production Cadenza. Today, you can buy this vehicle in a base and a limited trim. The limited will basically have the SXL badge on the back with chrome wheels and LED fog lights. Um, when you first bought this vehicle, when it first came out, it didn't have any trim levels. You basically picked a luxury and a technology package. Now, checking out the interior of the Cadenza, of course, being that this is currently Kia's flagship model, you can expect a really, really nice interior. And my tester is equipped with the premium white Napa other seats. It's a very, very nice combination. It looks great, especially with a two-tone black interior with this uh, smoky blue exterior color. Now you can see stepping inside the vehicle, this is a roomy and large full-size sedan and the cabin certainly exudes that. Uh, you'll find plenty of standard equipment as expected for this top level sedan. Uh, push button start comes standard on every cadenza, so basically put your foot on the brake and push the button to start the engine. Now you can see there's a 7 inch LCD screen in the instrument panel, uh, that's optional, the lower lower trim levels will not have that screen. Uh, you can see it's very faux Mercedes, actually it reminds me very much of the Mercedes Benz S Class. Now every Cadenza will come standard with navigation, uh, it'll have that 8 inch touchscreen display with Kia's UVO Uconnect system, their U-Voice, I'm sorry it's called U-Voice, Uconnect is Chrysler Dodge. You can see there's the navigation system, it's basically the same unit that I showed you guys in a um, Kia and other Kia products. Uh, it's a little bit different than Hyundai's system. This is not Hyundai's Blue Link. Kia has their own system. Now, the interior of this vehicle, as expected, is really nice. I mean, they're going to charge a lot of money for their flagship sedan at the time, so they you should expect a nice interior. The dashboard has a soft touch graining material. Everything fits together nice. There's a really nice dark wood grain accent. Uh, you can see the upper panels of the dashboard here is leather stitched and it's very soft touch. Uh, the steering wheel is leather and wood grain and it is heated. You get steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The door panels are also soft touch. The same material from the dashboard. There's an aluminum uh, door handle here with more Napa leather and then of course a padded armor so where your elbows are going to rest. The driver and the front passenger window are automatic up down. I kind of think they should have made all four auto up down but I like how he has trimmed the window switches in uh, the same aluminum trim that's on the door handles. Now in terms of the features in this vehicle, uh, as expected, navigation is standard. When you put it in reverse, you get a nice backup camera. It has distance markers, but no trajectory. A little bit funny how it's missing that. You can see they try to add some kind of like a, a pseudo avant-garde luxury look with the analog uh, clock. It actually does look nice. I like the contrasting uh, silver trim here and there. Um, the navigation system, it's pretty responsive. It's really easy to use. You basically have your hard buttons here. Your climate is here, so for example, if I wanted to go to media, you'll have MP3, you'll have uh, USB, you have Bluetooth streaming audio, you have um, HD radio, AM, FM, um, satellite radio, of course. Now, now everything in this vehicle is pretty user-friendly, uh, as well as, you know, 
upping or bringing the Kia Cadenza into the 21st century. Now, the six-speed automatic transmission is your only transmission option. Of course, uh, it does come with a manual shift mode. There is no sport mode here, but you have paddle shifters in case you do want to take control of the gears. Um, the audio system in this vehicle is a 12-speaker Infiniti sound system. It sounds all right. Honestly, I've heard um, Infiniti's not necessarily my favorite brand, but it does sound pretty well. Um, you'll have features like an electronic parking brake, heated and uh, cooled driver's seat, heated steering wheel. There's a nice little uh, power folding fold down sunshade in the back when you push that button down there. Um, overall, I mean, the interior of this vehicle looks really nice. It feels good. You have this really huge panoramic sunroof here that actually only opens over the front, but it does give you a nice view over the back. And then you can see if you don't want the sun, it does have a power retractable sunshade with this really, really nice uh, suede headliner. It feels really expensive. It looks good. Overall, I'm really pleased with the interior of the Cadenza. I think it actually feels really, really luxurious, and it surprised me when I got into this vehicle. Now checking out the rear seat of the Cadenza, it is large, and that's expected for a vehicle that is this big. You can see stepping inside, it's got roughly 38 inches of legroom back here. You can see there's nice vents back here, dual map pockets uh, in the front seats. You can see if you fold down the armrest here, you'll get cup holders, but no additional storage. Uh, the door panel materials, they're the same soft touch materials from the front, uh, same Napa leather here, and you can see the rear seats here are actually heated in the back as well. Now checking out the trunk of the Cadenza, it is a large trunk and you can expect a large trunk in this class. It measures about 17 cubic feet, which is a little bit smaller than the Ford Taurus, but it's larger than, than uh, the Avalon, the Maxima, uh, the Buick LaCrosse. Um, the seats, they do not fold down, but you do get a pass through. Overall, um, it's a very nicely finished and large opening for the trunk. Looking underneath the hood of the Cadenza, this is really where it also separates itself from the Optima. The Optima only comes with a four-cylinder, even on the top trims. The Cadenza only comes with a V6. This is the company's corporate 3.3-liter Lambda 2 GDI V6. GDI stands for Gasoline Direct Injection. The numbers are pretty impressive for a 3.3-liter, 293 horsepower and 255 pound-feet of torque. It all goes through that six-speed automatic transmission through the front wheels. Fuel economy is rated at 19 in the city and 28 on the highway. Let's take it all. Take a look at how it all works together. So one of the advantages of owning a full-size sedan is being able to take advantage of just how smooth, quiet, and refined these things are on the highway. They are just a really excellent um, highway companion when you need to travel long distances. The Cadenza is certainly no exception. Uh, you can see here, getting up on at highway speeds around 60 miles per hour, the vehicle is very, very refined. The ride quality is quite soft, which is what most buyers in this class expect. Uh, the noise levels are also quite subdued. And um, the 19-inch wheels, they don't really react or result in much impact harshness, it's not, not as much as I thought at least. Um, and this is also where you'll be able to take advantage of the many um, driver assistance tech features that the Cadenza offers. Um, it offers features like lane departure warning, adaptive cruise, or smart adaptive cruise control, uh, blind spot monitoring. It is, however, missing forward collision warning or any kind of adaptive braking in case you're not paying attention. But all the Cadenza's driver assistance stuff works pretty well. You can see here at highway speeds, um, I'll be cruising along at 60 miles per hour. If I want to drift over toward the lane markers, the thing will actually beep at you and it'll continue to beep until you move over just to annoy the crap out of you or at least wake you up if you're not paying attention. The blind spot monitoring also works pretty well. There's, if it senses there's someone in your blind spot, that orange light comes on in the mirror. If I try to signal, oh, there's someone there, it'll actually beep at me and let me know that there's somebody there. The system is passive. It will not react with lane keeping assist or anything like that. Now the 3.3 liter V6 is also a engineering marvel of smoothness. It is very quiet, it is very refined. It packs a decent punch. Expect a zero to 60 time of about 6.2 seconds uh, with the six speed automatic and front drive. The Cadenza luckily is one of the lightest in the class. Um, if you guys look at like a Taurus, if you guys look at an Impala, they're gonna be closer to 4,000 pounds. The fact that the Cadenza doesn't offer all wheel drive also keeps the 
the weight down for this vehicle. However, it is missing a couple of, you know, extra engine options. There's no four-cylinder available. There's no hybrid available. There's no more potent V6 available or turbo V6, like, for example, what a Taurus show offers. But, I mean, most buyers in this class really just need a comfortable long-distance cruiser with really comfortable seats, excellent visibility, and um, just a really nice highway companion. The Cadenza certainly fits that bill. Now, one area that um, I really like about this vehicle is the smart cruise control system, the adapter cruise control. So basically, to use it, it's pretty much like using any other car with cruise control. You push the cruise on button, you set it to, let's say, 65 miles per hour. Um, now, the vehicle's camera, which is actually located in the rearview mirror, will actually scan the road ahead of you. It'll actually see cars that are in front of you. And that's the lane departure warning bothering me again. It'll see cars that are in front of you. And if it sees a car that's too close, It'll actually back off the throttle. It'll actually hit the brakes. You can feel it hitting the brakes. It sees, it sees that Accord that's in front of me. You can adjust the distance. I have it set to the farthest distance. If I want to uh, increase the distance, the vehicle will actually sense that that car in front of you has moved out of the way, and it'll actually speed up. Now, this system is capable of bringing the Cadenza to a complete stop if the traffic in front of you has stopped. It'll only do that for three seconds. Once the traffic actually stops longer than that, the system will shut off, and you'll have to re-intervene again. Now, if you're closing in on a vehicle, the system will react by stabbing the brakes, and you can actually feel that. So it is a little bit eerie at first, especially those of you who aren't used to an adaptive cruise control system. But I got to say, once you get used to it, once you actually start to trust it, it's really nice, especially if you guys are in an area that uh, is constantly burdened with rush hour traffic, like the Washington, D.C. area. Well, all that said, um, fuel economy numbers for this V6 are rated at 1928. Uh, honestly, I've been averaging... The computer says I'm averaging 17.3 right now, but that's mostly in city driving. Um, if I reset it and put it just on pure highway alone, the system will actually do about uh, 20, or the vehicle will actually do about 25 miles per gallon. A little bit off of the UK numbers, but um, I tend to drive with a heavy foot. Those of you who drive more conservatively will uh, see better numbers than that. See here, as soon as I pull out of uh, this vehicle's way, the system does actually hit the gas and you can feel it accelerating. So it's really cool to have it drive for you. There's still no, there's no lane keeping assist, so the, steer, the system won't steer around gentle curves for you like some of the other uh, luxury brands systems, but it's still nice that Kia includes it at this price point. Now speaking of the price, the Cadenza starts at about $35,000. Now that is a pretty good chunk of change. It actually makes it more expensive than competitors like the Taurus, the Impala, the Avalon. But keep in mind, those vehicles are available with four cylinder engines where the Cadenza offers a V6 and it comes basically loaded. So um, if you equip it like, or co equip its competitors, it falls right in line. My particular tester is, um, it, it has the premium, I'm sorry, the luxury and the technology package that pushes the sticker to about 41.9. That's still a lot of money, but honestly it is cheaper than uh, the other vi other vehicles in this class when you can, when you load them up with all the options. Um, so Kia still brings in that value card. Now Kias aren't as cheap as they once were, but honestly with the amount of technology, the styling, the premium cabin finishings. I mean, this vehicle feels like a luxury car. It looks like a luxury car and it certainly drives like one. I mean, the only, my only gripe with this thing is the lack of driving fun. I mean, but let's face it, if you buy a vehicle in this class, you're not really going to look for driving excitement. That's just not part of the program here. Um, buy a mid-size sedan if you want or if you're looking for more um, driving fun in the corners. A full-size sedan really is just too big. It's too soft and it's designed to take you on long highway trips and provide the most space in the cabin. Now, I have had the opportunity to drive the other full-size uh, S-sedans, like I've driven the New Taurus, the Avalon, the LaCrosse, um, and I gotta say, the Cadenza makes a really strong case for itself. This vehicle has, I think it's the best looking, I think it offers really good value, um, I think it has a really premium cabin environment, and it's also a spacious cabinet. For the money at 41.9, it is, it is expensive, but, um, you know, this vehicle is, you're basically buying a vehicle that offers the space, most of the technology that a 7 Series or S-Class would offer you, but at half the cost. So that's basically what this full-size sedan segment has become. It's turned into, like, a luxury vehicle that, you know, you get for a pretty steep discount. So, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2014 Kia Cadenza. If you are in the market for a full-size sedan, make sure you add this vehicle to your list. It's certainly worth a look. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all later.